Hey guys, it's Shane, and today I'm super excited to be showing you how to make melodic techno like Dennis Horvat and Fidelis. If I pronounce that wrong, I apologize. As always, you can get the project file and samples of MIDI and presets and all that stuff from this video in the description that you just heard in the intro. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. So, the first thing that we have here is the pad, which sounds like this. So what this is playing is very simple, it's just playing D, we're in D minor, so the root note, and then A, which is the fifth, so just notes from the chord, and then there's this one A sharp here, which is just one note up from the fifth, that's not technically in the D minor chord, but I mean, it's very close. So yeah, it's very simple, it's just kind of adding some background musical stuff, you know, so it's not just like the lead and the bass. For the sound on this one, I made it using analog. What we have here is we have two saw waves, as you can see, and I've got those going into a low pass filter. The low pass has a bit of an LFO on it. I also I have an LFO on the frequency and on the resonance, actually. It's just this LFO one. And it's just like slowly moving it. So it's not just staying in the same place the whole time. We got the amp envelope set like that. And then the last thing we have here inside the synth is just a bit of vibrato as well as some unison just to kind of give it a more chorusy texture. After that, speaking of chorusy texture, we have a chorus. You can see I've got the rate pretty slow here. After that, we have some reverb, just giving it some more space, you know, pretty important for a pad. And then I have a drum bus on there, kind of fanning it up. You can hear that makes it sound very like analog and raw, which is nice for the style. And the last thing I have on here is a compressor, very slightly side chaining into the kick. It's not a lot. But it's just kind of ducking it out of the way a little bit so the kick is still the loudest thing in the mix. And that is it for the pad. The next thing that we have here is a string, which sounds like this. So what this is, I'll show you the notes it's playing. It's just playing a D minor chord. We just have D, the root note, A, the fifth, once again, like I said before, and then F, the minor third. And then the F is up an octave. So this will be the standard chord, but I've got that F up there. Just kind of splits it out a bit more. And then for the sound, what I've got here is I have the string sample. There you go. And what I've done is I'm looping this here, and you can hear... It keeps restarting, like it keeps, like the loop is, is very clear when that's happening. And usually I would try to mask that, but in this case, I'm actually kind of just embracing it. And letting it kind of give it an interesting texture. It's a cool way to make this not just sound like a straight string, and make it sound a little bit more futuristic. After that, I just have a bit of reverb, just giving it some space, again, with any pad. Very important. And then we have a compressor side chaining into the kick. And that is it for the string. The next thing that we have here is this lead, which sounds like this. So here's the MIDI here. This is not really that complicated. Definitely not as complicated as it probably seems. Is that literally just all notes from the D minor scale. Like we have D, F, another D up there. E, which is, you know, the ninth. Like, it's not that complicated. It's just kind of like putting it in there and then getting like an interesting rhythm as well. You can hear this is really playing off of the groove with the kick and the bass and all the drums. It's not just like dun 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 dun, but it's really. Got some groove to it as well. And yeah, for the sound on this one, I made it using analog. What we've got is we have a pulse wave here. You can see I've got a little bit of an LFO on the pulse width. And then I've also got a saw wave. You can see on the pulse wave, I have that little pitch envelope. That's just giving it some detune. If I turn that off. It's a subtle difference like with it versus without it. But yeah, it just kind of makes it a bit more interesting, I feel like. After that, I've got those going into the slow pass filter. You can see the frequency is there. I've got an envelope on there. And what's happening is I'm automating the decay of the envelope. I'm also doing this with the amp envelope, actually. So, yeah, this is kind of like... You can probably hear this throughout the track. You can see this moving. 
<laughs> so this is how we kind of bring the sound to life. I notice this in a lot of these solo tracks. Like, you know, it's very minimal. It's very simple. It's kind of just about getting, like, a few very good elements that work together. So when you're making something minimal, the way that you make it interesting is by having the main elements change throughout the track. So that's kind of what we're doing here, you know. We're just making this come to life a bit more because it's moving and changing, and it's just that much more interesting to listen to, you know? So yeah, and then we got the amp on flip set like that once again. The decay on that is being automated. There's the automation. You can see it's just the same automation for both of these as well. If I put that one in a new lane, and then we got that one. I literally just copied one of them onto the other one. So yeah, and then the last thing we have there is just a bit of vibrato. You can hear that's giving it more of that kind of chorusy, warbly sound. And then I have a bit of unison as well. This really helps to make this like a fat synth, you know, and make it more of that kind of trancey. You can hear without that, it's a little bit more thin. But with it, it feels really as big as it possibly can be. After that, I have a bit of chorus. Here's without it. And then with you can hear, let's just smooth the sound out a bit more. It gives it more of that like warbly, chorusy texture. Then we have a bit of echo just doing dotted eighth notes. as you can see. I've got that on the mid side setting, so that's making it a bit more wide as you can hear. And yeah, after that I have some reverb. Just giving it some more space. And then we have a drum bus to fatten it up. You can hear without that versus with that. It's making a big difference. And then I've got a compressor side chaining it just a little bit to the kick. Not a lot. It's just like with that first pad. It's just kind of like, you know, making it fit into the mix a little bit better. And then I have the CQ8 cutting out the lawn as well as giving it a bit of a high end boost. So there's about that, and then with it you can hear it makes it fit into the mix a bit better. And then the last thing we have here is we have the Haas effect. So the Haas effect is this big stereo imaging effect. If I turn this off, you can hear. It doesn't feel as big. So what's happening here is we are spreading out the sound. The way the Haas effect works is you take the sound, split it into the left and right chain, or signal, in this case chains because we're using an audio effect rack. And then you delay one of them like ever so slightly for usually maybe like 10 to 50 milliseconds. And what happens is because you're hearing the same thing in each ear like slightly at different times, it, you hear this like huge wide sound, you know? So yeah, it's a very simple but powerful effect. So the way we're doing it here is the way I usually do it if you watch a lot of my videos. Just got an audio effect rack. You can see we have a right chain and then we have a left chain. It doesn't matter which one you put it on, but I've got a simple delay on the left chain. And you can see we have this in the mono setting. I've got it unsynced. So yeah, 10 milliseconds, like I said, between 10 and 50. We got no feedback in the dry wets all the way up. So this is literally just pushing the signal. It's not giving it any extra delays. It's just pushing the signal forward 10 milliseconds. And then there we go. Now, the thing is, you still want the sound to work in the club. And what I mean by this is, typically, club systems are in mono. So, if you have this huge wide lead, when you play it in the club, it's not going to be that effective. And, I mean, this is techno, so that needs to work. So, what I have here is I have this utility, and I'm actually using the bass mono setting. So, this is just this thing where you can make just part of the sound mono, pretty much. So, you don't have to have, you know, your bass super wide. You can have just the high end super wide. So, I'm using this here. You can see I've got it at 500 hertz. Basically... I'm not just trying to get the bass mono, I'm really just trying to get kind of like the lower ranges of the sound mono. There's without that, you can hear it. It's not as fat as well because like by having kind of that low mid range right down the center, you get like that fatness and that body to the sound, but then with the high end being a lot wider. It's kind of like optimizing the sound, you know? And yeah, that is it for the lead. Next thing we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. This is pretty simple. You can see we just have this kind of like punchy 808 style kick. Pretty standard for this style of stuff. I've got it going through a bit of drum bus. You can see, yeah, that's really fattening it up. We got the transients up on that a little bit as well. And you can see I've got this tuner here as well. So that's just showing you it's tuned to D. Next thing we have here is the bass, which sounds like this. So this is a really simple bass line. It's just playing this constant boom, 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 chugging on the D there. It goes up to A, which is the fifth. 
You know, pretty simple. With this style, it's very progressive and kind of like... When I say progressive, I mean like repetitive. Like it's very like, you know, just kind of going on one note like that for a while. So yeah, and then for the sound with this one, I made this one using analog. You can see we've got two side waves here. Just got them down an octave, and then those are going into a low pass filter. The low pass has an envelope on it. So you can hear that's what's making it sound like a pluck. I've also got the amp envelope set like this. And then that is it for inside the synth. After that, I have a bit of chorus here without that. And then with it, you can hear it kind of smooths the sound out a bit. And it's making it a bit wider. It's not a whole lot. Again, you don't want your low end to be super wide. But it does make it a bit fatter this way. After that, we have a bit of echo. Here's without this. And then with it, you can hear it just kind of fills in the spaces a little bit. I feel like it makes it sound a bit more organic and like analog and just sort of alive. Then without this, you can hear without it, it's just very like rigid. After that, I have a saturator. Here's without that. And with that, you can hear this is really fattening the sound up. And then we have the TQ8. This is just doing a line boost. This might seem drastic, but I wanted to make the sound really fat. So got to do what you got to do. Um, and then I also have this cut at 100 hertz just to make room for the kick. Because that's usually where the kick is punching through. After that, we have this utility doing another bass mono. So that's because we got that chorus early in the chain. Here's without this. And then with you can hear, it's like a lot tighter and more focused. After that, I've got a compressor side chaining into the kick just slightly. Again, like with all the other ones, we're not doing a whole lot of side chaining here. It's just kind of making it fit into the mix a bit better. And then I have this other EQ8 here. This is just for one spot. You can hear it just cuts out some of the mud around that 272 hertz range. So I've got the kick and the bass in a group together. I talk about this a lot on the channel. But this is a technique known as bussing. You know, you put kind of the similar sounds in a group, in this case, the low end. And when you put effects on them together, it makes them a lot fatter. I'll show you. Here's without anything. And then with everything. So you can hear the difference that makes. It really makes it sound a lot more professional. So the first thing we have here is the saturator and the strum buzz. You can hear these are just kind of like progressively fattening the sound up. I like to kind of stack these, you know. You can see like both of these are pretty light. I've got them down pretty low, but I always find it's better to stack like just kind of a few effects which are each doing small things as opposed to just having like one super hard saturator or one super hard drum bus that's just like you know hard to control this way it's a bit more nuanced you get a little bit more of like an interesting sound i feel and then after that i just have the cq8 this is just giving it a low end boost as well as a low mid-range cut and then i have a little high end boost for the click on the kick so here's without this and then with you can hear it's actually a little bit quieter after this. I mean, that's fine. It's only relative. But yeah, this is just kind of like making it sound a bit cleaner. It really cuts out a lot of that mud and makes the low end just so much fatter with that boost. So the next thing that we have here is these hi-hats, which sound like this. So what we got is we have three hi-hats. We have this one, which is just playing like that. We have this one, which is in the high end. This one's just doing constant 16th notes. And then I have this auto pan on here, which is making it go like back and forth from the left and right ear. So it's a good way to kind of open the mix up a bit. It gives the drums a bit more clarity because typically when we think of like clarity in a mix, it's really like just those high highs. And that's what this is adding. So you can hear if I turn it off, the drums almost sound a little bit more muddy. When we add this, it feels like it really brings them to life. After that, we have the last hi-hat, which sounds like this. So this is just sort of like more of an open hi-hat. You know, it's kind of just hitting on the upbeats. And yeah, after that, we have this hand clap. So I wanted to get like a very organic sounding hand clap. I've noticed this both in Fidelis music as well as Dennis Horvath. And just like a lot of like melodic techno in general. It's a good way to kind of bring something more organic because we have all this very sharp and kind of like like percussion but when we add something like this which is a very like organic sounding hand clap like I said you can hear it just kind of adds something that isn't there and I feel like it's really interesting it's better than just using like an 808 clap or something like that so this is just 
like I said, hand clap sample. Got it going through a bit of drum bus. You can hear it's fattening it up. And then I've got the CQ8, which is cutting up the run and doing a bit of a high boost as well. Just kind of optimizing the sound. I have all that percussion in a group or a bus. In this case, I just have a bit of drum bus on it, so here's without that. And then with it, it didn't really need a whole lot. This is some pretty sharp, hard-hitting percussion as it is. And that's why you want to choose really good samples as well. So you don't have to do a whole lot of stuff to them. But yeah, so that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that stuff that I just showed you in this video in the description. So make sure to check for that. And if you're a patron, I'm a patron and check there because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.